I think games-based learning will be a fantastic way to engage the children. They often play with their consoles at home in their spare time, in their fun time, in their play time. And if we can incorporate the learning in that in school, they will be playing without actually realising that they're learning. Neil Webster is a Year 3 teacher at St Christopher's Catholic Primary School in Liverpool. He's been teaching for four years. Neil doesn't know much about using computer games in the classroom, but would like to find out more. So we've challenged him to discover as much as he can about this technology and to transfer the skills he picks up into his own classroom. Following his progress through the challenge, you'll find out, among other things, how games can be used in the classroom to enhance subject teaching and learning, how they can help spark discussion and group work, and how they can even be used to encourage good behaviour. If you want to give it a go yourself, there's a range of useful support materials on the page for this programme on the Teachers TV website, including short how-to videos and case studies from other key stages and subjects. So Neil's travelling down to Woodford East London to meet a Year 6 teacher at Oakdale Junior School who's been using the technology in her teaching for the last year. I'm very excited about my visit today. I want to come in um, with an open mind and really see what it's like and then take that back to speak in Liverpool and then filter it through the school. Hello, Neil. Nice to meet you. Dawn Hallibone. Hi, Dawn. Nice to meet you. Dawn Hallibone is keen to show Neil the benefits that come from using computer games in the classroom. As well as other games, Dawn uses the Nintendo DS, a popular handheld games console, which her school have invested in. One of the games being played on the console this morning is designed to improve mental maths. Could I watch you for a little bit? Yeah. Is that okay? I've not seen these before. This is time do. lapse. You look at the time on that clock and you have to work out how what's the difference between them two times. Oh, right. So you take away one, two, three, fifteen minutes. So that is two hours and forty-five minutes. Very good maths. If you're watching this on the Teachers TV website and want to find out what games are suitable for your pupils, look below for a short video about games ratings. Dawn shows Neil Tut Pup, a free online maths game. They can practice their timetable, they also do spelling and they can do algebra. This is a free download? Uh, no, it's, it's a website, it's completely web... free. Oh, right. um, and they can access it from home or school. And what they do is they wait for a challenger. So what is happening is they're waiting for somebody anywhere in the world now to play. Oh, and again, their name doesn't come up or anything. So there's someone else in the world. Yeah. Static of views at wait. Yeah. That is amazing. You just type it in and then you click on OK. Oh, it's a race. Having a great morning so far. The visit's going really well. I'm really, really excited about the impact that's having in class. And they're working at their own pace, at their own level. Nobody knew how they got on if they didn't want to. So they can really push themselves and try their best without fear of embarrassment. As well as using computer games to improve maths, Dawn is also using them to help strengthen literacy. This afternoon, her class have been split into groups, each with a single console, playing a game called Professor Layton and the Curious Village. Yeah, who's doing the puzzle? I can't do the puzzle. I'll do it. Two of the equations have D as their answer. Your starting point should be should be to compare these two equations. A and A is one and C is three. The game is a non-linear detective story where the decisions made by the player affect what happens next. So that would be three minus two. All A While playing, the pupils discover one of the characters has been murdered. Dawn is prompted by this event in the story to use another program on the consoles called PictoChat and direct the focus of the class towards a more traditional literacy activity. So what I want you to do is write who you think did it. Go. PictoChat is a way of communicating wirelessly on the Nintendo DS, from one console to another. Pupils can enter their thoughts by typing, writing or drawing on the screens, as well as seeing what everyone else has added. What we're going to do now is to use this information to write a newspaper report. So what I'd like you to do is, on your groups, to come up with what the first couple of sentences could be. 
We could talk about the suspects of who people think he is. I think no, it's the, um, the guy with the question marks, the three question marks. He wasn't looking like a nice person. As the class get on with their newspaper reports, Dawn shows Neil some other creative writing exercises they've done relating to the game. And they had to come up with one word that they thought described him. And literally, I think they'd been playing it for about 15 minutes each. Yeah, brilliant. And then we had to imagine that they stand here looking into the village. Yeah. So I had to say, what do you first thoughts of like, um, I'll manage that the clock on the tower is the wrong time. But having been told the nature of this village, it could be a challenging puzzle set up. It's so already beginning to, yeah, relate it back. So hopefully you've seen that this is just a literacy lesson. Yeah. Um, but there's other things out of it. You can do artwork out of it, you can draw the characters, the scene, completely cross curricular. Yeah, definitely the, the ideas that children have by spending time on the consoles is still in the head and they're getting it down on paper, which yeah. is fantastic. How do you cope with the less able writers? The less able writers have got a lot of impetus from the pictures. Nice. So, of course, they've got a lot of the visual stimuli, so they know what the characters look like, they know what the room, they can describe all of that. Yeah. They're reading, we've done a newspaper report, mm -hmm. and if you think the curriculum that we've covered so far this morning, you wouldn't necessarily do a normal morning with normal books. And the vocabulary's been fantastic, yeah. hasn't it? The discussion has been fantastic. And it's just that, using that tool. Yeah. And it's giving them the pictures to put into place in the story. I thought it would be very much solitary, really. I thought the class may be quiet. And there was a part of that which, is, which had its place, which was a good part. But also the discussion was probably something that I didn't expect to see. As well as encouraging group discussion, there's another reason Dawn was keen to use only one console per table. Each cartridge can cost... 20 to 30 pounds each and if we're buying 30 of those each time the budget obviously increases and we don't know how successful it's going to be in the class mm -hmm. so we wanted to use it on teamwork so that we've only got five of them being used we only have to buy five games and improve discussion probably as yes, well because they have to discussion. talk what's the kind of the the, the price impact on yeah, the school the, there are educational suppliers that are offering the ds for about 77 pounds for each console and then the games range from sort of nine to eleven pounds each yeah. so it meant that we have only got 30 consoles across 350 children but we managed to get them all for just under two and a half thousand pounds which i know is still a lot of money of your budget but for a bit of Worthy. ict tech that can be used so well yeah. i think it's a worthwhile investment Another possible way to lessen the cost impact on your school is to ask pupils who already own a console to bring it to the lesson where games are being used. Might be a silly question, but has anybody not liked it? None of the children, no. It's learning through play, which is what we teach children from the age of four. So why should we stop when they get yeah. to 11, 15, 16? Yeah. We've had no negative from the parents. They're really positive, actually. Um, and then we had Ofsted in as well in March. Oh, right. And we got an outstanding for the lesson using the DSs as a mental and oral starter. And they actually commented on the final report about the interviews of technology, particularly to try and inspire boys and engage them yeah. in the writing. That's and, a focus, yeah. isn't it, for the country? Yeah. As well as being used in lessons, Dawn's school also used the consoles to reward good behaviour. What's Mrs Lloyd Evans holding? All together, one, two, three. Yeah. Who thinks they deserve the DSs this week? I was told today by Mrs Courtney, this particular class have been fantastic. The class who have been awarded the DSs this week are 3D. The winning pupils can use the consoles to play any game they choose in their free time at the end of the day. Neil's now got two weeks to devise a lesson plan for his Year 3 class based on using computer games. It's been a couple of weeks since I saw Dawn and really had some, came up with some great ideas and introduced it to the children more or less straight away and they've been really, really keen and really, really enjoying it. Neil's been experimenting with various games since meeting Dawn and today he's decided to use computer games in two separate lessons. If you're watching this on the Teachers TV website, you can see his lesson plans below. Neil's decided to use Tut Pup and Moshi Monsters, which Dawn recommended may work well with his pupils. To get things running smoothly, he needed to sort out a few niggles. What we found with our internet provider occasionally there was too much going on, so we had to refresh once or twice and it fixed itself and caught itself up, so it was easily solved. With Moshi Monsters, we struggled to use it initially because it was blocked from the local council's internet blocking provider. And a simple phone call to, to the council 
and got it unblocked and it was fine. It, it, it took about an hour or two to unblock, no problem. Neil begins the day using Tutpup, first on his whiteboard as a mental starter, and then the pupils move to the ICT suite to play individually. The best bits about Tutpup are the flexibility. We can use it anywhere in the world. The children have, have reacted really well, especially the boys. The boys have got this competitive element in them. You see it playing football every day, and they see this as a bit of a challenge, and they want to get more points, or they want to get more right answers and want to do more and play more to achieve the, one of the top spots. Neil has set up a class account, which means he can assess the pupils' progress as they climb up the leaderboard. I played it at home and I was on the top of the leaderboard and then I was coming 14th and now I'm coming 13th to play with people around the world. If you've been someone else from another city, you go in front of the other people. In the afternoon, Neil turns the pupils' attention to Moshi Monsters, a free online game where users adopt a monster and complete puzzles to keep it happy and healthy. The games are things like puzzles, maths, word searches. Some are hard, some are easy. And you can get trophies when you win the games. You play at school and you're playing less than you can play at home too on the internet. Moving his lesson back into the classroom, Neil uses the ideas inspired by the game to work with his pupils in literacy. I want you to write five adjectives about your monster. Okay, what is an adjective? Lauren. Uh, describing words. Well done, Lauren. So it could be their colour, their appearance, anything describing your monster. Characters in the game regularly use words that are new to the pupils and Neil makes the most of this opportunity to extend vocabulary. Frank was... What? What was that fantastic big word? Frank was what? F phenomenal. Well done Molly, it was phenomenal. And we said phenomenal was a positive feeling, didn't we? Okay, now I'd like you to use some of these ideas and explain in a few sentences, maybe two sentences, something you've learnt about your monster. The biggest surprise I noticed was after one or two days, six or seven children had actually played at home for homework. Not that I'd asked them, they just did it off their own back. And my class don't always bring homework in, they get three homeworks a week. So for six or seven children to be using it in their own time and to be playing and learning was brilliant. The skills and the benefits from an educational point of view, being phenomenal, is I was, I was brand new to games-based learning and I, I was a little concerned as a teacher that there would be too much play and not enough learning, but having seen it and used it, the balance is fantastic. I've learned very quickly, very easily, what's out there and it's, it's had a massive impact in just two weeks in my school. Teaching partly is about having different opportunities for children and games-based learning gives every child an opportunity to, to reach their potential, to develop, to be creative and to, to grow. If you're watching this on the Teachers TV website and are interested to see how teachers of different subjects and key stages use computer games in the classroom, then have a look at our short films below.